when Nikon contacted me and said, do you want to try anything? I immediately said, yeah, what about the Z9? And they were all like, yeah, we don't have any. So my second choice was the Nikon Z or Z FC. As an avid Fujifilm shooter, here's the Fujifilm X-T3. I'm very used to these dials and the ISO dials. So I am totally into any camera company that wants to make a retro camera. So I was very interested to try the Nikon Z, yeah, we say Z here in the US, Z FC. It's a little awkward, the name. It would have been cool if they called it the Z film cam, oh, film camera. Now, the other thing that interested me about this camera is the sensor inside, because lately I've been using the Nikon Z62 for my portrait sessions and my professional work and I'm loving the image quality that is coming from the camera and the Z lenses are just <laughs> On here we have the Nikon uh, 28 millimeter 2.8, which is kind of like their little retro-y street camera sort of look. I guess we should make our thumbnail. You know, I actually recorded a video of unboxing this camera and giving you my first impressions, but I absolutely bored myself to death. So what I did was I shut off the video camera and I went out and shot and actually used the camera. I even had lunch with the camera. <laughs> and I think this camera is for those types of people, people who take their cameras out to lunch. You have a little bit of an emotional sort of connection to your gear. You like to stare at your gear. You like to show off your gear. So I think for certain people, cameras are tools and it doesn't matter what they look like. Sony. <laughs> but for some of us, we're a little shallow. We do like to look at the cameras and we like their pretty shininess and we like to, you know, not even take pictures, just wear it around your neck. So let's start with the first positive because that is the first positive of this camera is the absolute look, feel, and retro vibe that you get from the camera. I think if you're buying this camera, you're absolutely into what it looks like. Come on, come on, admit it. <laughs> because you could easily get the, uh, the Nikon Z50, which has the same sensor inside, has a better grip, but you're getting this because you want the retro uh, dials, you want the ISO dials, you just want the little window that shows you your aperture. And I totally get that. This camera, the number one thing on this camera that is impressive is its design. It looks like a film camera. FC. <laughs> the second positive, it's absolutely the image quality. It's on par with everything I've seen from the Nikon Z, Z lineup, the Z7 I've tried, the Z6 II. There's just something about the files, the Nikon files that have, even the JPEG straight out of camera, I think they add a little bit of curve to the deepest shadows just slightly. And so if you shoot straight out of camera, that gives it kind of a little bit of a filmic vibe. So the pictures that you get and the video that you get from the Nikon cameras is one of my favorites. Uh, I will say that one thing that Fujifilm is known for are their film simulations. And uh, f uh, the Nikon does have like film looks. <laughs> they're just a little, they're a little too wacky. Uh, if someone doesn't know how to use them, they're at a real disadvantage because one of my favorite things is to pick one of them. Like for example, one of them is called charcoal, but you can actually just like a filter on a phone, you can dial down all the looks. And so you bring it down to 50%, 40%. I found with charcoal at 30%, you almost get a cool filmic curve vibe that is desaturated. And you can make your own film simulations by adjusting all these little JPEG parameters. Now that does only affect the JPEGs, remember that. Another plus, autofocus performance seemed to be on par with the Nikon Z6 II. Uh, it has the same modes as the Nikon Z6 II and some modes that are actually missing from the Z6 and the Z7 one of my favorites being the, you can actually choose a rectangle to put a person's face in and it will connect the eye, it will attach to the eye, but you can actually use that rectangle as a large single focus point. It has an interesting shutter sound. Listen, I think it's gonna be one of those love or hate things, but I actually liked it. 
Wait, that isn't love or hate, but I liked it. <laughs> it's got kind of like a nice old clunk. It's not like the D700 though. That would have been cool. The ISO dial, shutter dial, and exposure compensation dial all feel great. Uh, the buttons are the same as the Nikon Z6 II. All right, next on the list I have fun factor. And the reason is because of the way I've been shooting the camera. So it th has the artic fully articulating screen, which I'm usually not a fan of, but what I've been doing with this here is actually keeping it closed. And every time I'm gonna take a photograph, I'm like, oh, there's no screen on the back. And I've been using the viewfinder, which is, it actually has a really nice viewfinder. Let me compare it to the X-T3 real quick here. Okay, they, they seem super similar to me, X-T3 uh, viewfinder. I would say that maybe the X-T3 is a little slightly, but I'm kind of biased right there. <laughs> so keeping the screen closed and using it like a film camera was fantastic. It was super fun using the dials. And um, it also saves on battery life. What's neat is when you have the screen closed, the little EVF is not on full time. It actually turns itself off. So you can keep the camera on around your neck or walk around with it. But when you put it up to your eye, it turns on the EVF. So that's a great battery saving system decision thingamabub. All right, the next one is uh, the mode switch, which at first was a negative to me. I was kind of like, why is there an MASP, manual aperture priority, you know, shutter priority program auto switch if we have dials? It doesn't make any sense. And for those of you that are confused, on a Fujifilm camera, there is no mode dial because the modes are decided by what you're doing with the dials. So you just put, for example, on the lens, you just put the, the lens on what's called automatic and you can put each of the dials on automatic and uh, that decides the mode. If you put it on A, this one doesn't have any A. And at first I was kind of like, that's dumb. But then I was kind of liking it. It was a different way to, to sort of think. And one of my favorite things about one of my Fujifilm cameras, the Fujifilm X-T20, is that you can quickly, if you're handing the camera to someone or if something is about to happen, you could switch the camera to auto mode like fast. You can do that here as well with this mode switch. So at first I was like, this is dumb. But then I was like, I was like, handing the camera over to my daughter. I'm like, you want to try it? And I just flicked it to program mode. And I didn't have to be like, think about the dials or teach them about the dials. With the Fujifilm X-T3, if you want to put it in auto mode fast, you have to flip each of the settings to A. And so I kind of like that. However, it is a negative if you're, if someone's a beginner and they, they don't know what the modes and how it works, it could be confusing for someone you have to have it on M for all the dials to work. If you put it on A, aperture priority, well, now the shutter dial doesn't work anymore. And so there were a couple of times where I'm like, why is my shutter not changing? So you have to keep that in mind. It has video and at first I was kind of like annoyed because the video settings were the same as the photo settings and I like to shoot in flat profile, but I realized there's a setting in the camera. So by default, it's set to film movies the same way that you shoot photos. I would switch that off in the menu. And although there's no stabilization, I found that the way I shoot video is I like to take small clips and this has digital stabilization that's like rock solid. So for me, that totally works. If I'm traveling and I'm shooting photos, I wanna just take a little bit of video. I'm not doing any kind of pans or motion. So the digital stabilization is a great addition if they're not gonna have IBIS. And it's sad that some of the Fujifilm cameras don't have like this X-T3 has the only way to stabilize this camera is with some sort of gimbal or to have a lens that has image stabilization. So I do, I do appreciate digital stabilization for quick video clips. Another bonus is the touch screen is a really great experience on Nikon. You can change your menu options really easily. There was one option that was annoying me at first I thought was a negative, is when I tried to film myself, I couldn't see my audio levels. No matter what I did, I was kind of like, all right, if I turn the camera this way, you have audio levels, but if you try to film yourself, your audio levels are gone. So again, by default, Nikon has made the camera have something called like a selfie mode. So if, you, if you're in photo mode and you flip the screen towards yourself, 
it gives you a two second timer so that you can put the camera down, take a selfie for two seconds. But for some reason in video, selfie mode gets rid of your video information if you're filming yourself. Okay, and then the list of things I wish were a little better, uh, my kind of hangups with the camera. And the first one is size. It's kind of this awkward size where it's, you know, it's totally emulating an old film camera, but some of those old film cameras were a little too big. And that's why I was a little confused with this camera. Like, who's it for? If someone's doing street photography, they usually street photographers like the most capable camera in the smallest possible size. Now with this 28 millimeter, this does make it a nice little street camera uh, with the 24 to 70, <laughs> you know, this would be a good travel kit. Uh, it starts to get a little, it's also really hard to hold, which is the next negative. Uh, I would say that if you are getting this camera, definitely buy a grip for it or even better because we already established that you're really shallow is get like a leather cover for it to really like bring it to the next level, like a black leather sort of grippy cover. I think that would be beautiful because obviously you know, that's what you're all about. <laughs> now it brings up the question, if you're walking around with this as a street photographer, are people going to notice you more because they think you're, you know, shooting with a film camera? It's, is it people going to ask you about this camera? You know, like, are you going to be more sticking out like a sore thumb as opposed to having something that's a little stealthier? So uh, in the future, Nikon, think of making a full black version, uh, which brings me to my next negative. And this is a personal preference, but I am not a fan of the silver paint on some of these cameras. It gives it kind of a little bit of a cheapy look. It's same with the X-T4, the Fujifilm X-T4 paint job. Uh, if you want to talk about silver done right, think about the X-Pro2 uh, graphite edition. That camera just looks amazing if you're really shallow like me. And the Sony, oh, it's filming me. <laughs> I'm like looking for it. The Sony uh, A7C's silver, that paint job is done really, really well. I'm not a super fan of this silver paint job. And especially on the bottom, it, it sort of gives it kind of a cheapy feel. And that is my biggest negative with this camera is it sort of is a little plasticky, like too plasticky. Like listen to this door. So that's why I said put it in a leather case because overall it kind of has a little bit of a plasticky feel on the bottom. And I'm not a super fan of the leather-ish sort of 3D printed, you know, uh, thing they put on here. The, the grip from the camera has a nice feel, but the back of the screen has a little bit of a cheapy plastic feel. So, so you're gonna have to pick up the camera if, you're, if that's something that concerns you. Maybe in the future, Nikon will come out with a super premium version of this, but my thing is that no one wants to pay that much. You see, you want premium, but you don't wanna pay that much. You know what I'm saying? So overall, did I like the Nikon ZFC? And I will say yes, I absolutely liked the Nikon ZF, especially after I took it out to lunch. <laughs> and I think that's what this camera is all about. It's the camera you want to hang out with. It's the camera that is your buddy. For those of us that get you know emotionally attached to cameras, that's why I have so many. I don't want to sell them. They become like little people that hang out with me. I have problems. Ooh, it is pretty. All right, I'll see you guys next time.